The XB-70 was a sizable, long-range strategic bomber that was intended to replace the B-52 with research and development studies starting in 1995. The Air Force desired fresh technological developments just like with the B-58 program. In order to achieve this, the Air Force gave the prime contractor complete control over the weapon system. During the design stage, Boeing and North American competed for the contract. A Mach 3 bomber with a long-range, high-altitude, and the ability to carry both conventional and nuclear missiles were required by the Air Force. So how does XB-70 Valkyrie became America's super bomber ever built? Welcome to another episode brought to you by High Technology. If you are new from this channel, be part of us by subscribing so you won't miss any future content. As of today, let's get an up-close look at America's forgotten supersonic bomber. The North American XB-70 Valkyrie was built to take cues of a phenomenon known as compression lift, which occurs when a supersonic flight generates a shockwave that helps sustain some of the weight of the aircraft. The distinct feature decreased drag and was one of the XB-70's performance secrets. The concept for the XB-70 first emerged in the 1950s when it was believed that even higher speeds and altitudes would allow American bombers to pass through Soviet air defenses unharmed while carrying out their doomsday payloads. Fighters and anti-aircraft artillery were the only viable defenses against bombers at the time. Anti-aircraft weapons were still only sporadically effective at the time, and the performance of bombers was constantly improving, making interceptors more and more vulnerable. However, that image was drastically altered by the arrival of the first Soviet surface-to-air missiles in the late 1950s. The XB-70 was suddenly far more defenseless and not even its max three speeds could ensure its survival. The United States Air Force started to fly sorties at a lower altitude where the enemy radar would have more difficulty monitoring its target in order to deal with the growing threat posed by Soviet missiles. However, at these lower altitudes, the XB-70 Valkyrie would be significantly less efficient, so much that it would not outperform the B-52, the bomber it was intended to replace. The development of ICBM missiles in the late 1950s was another blow to to the XB-70 program because mission range and fuel efficiency would decrease when flying lower. The Valkyrie was created particularly to transport large nuclear warheads. However, ICBMs now pose a threat to the aircraft's intended use. Since he did not feel that the aircraft was actually needed, President Eisenhower had little faith in the Valkyrie project. His major arguments against it were similar to those made above. Rockets and missiles posed a threat and ICBMs offered a more cost-effective alternative. He also noted that by the time that the still underdevelopment aircraft was prepared for full-scale production, technology would have simply caught up to the Valkyrie. Kennedy supported the XB-70 and his support for it really played a role in his election campaign. Despite the Eisenhower administration's decision to scale back the project to a single prototype, however, the XB-70 Valkyrie project had already cost close to $7 billion by the time he was elected president, a significant price for a bomber. As a result, he abandoned the project in 1961 because it had grown too costly and pointless. Kennedy decided to turn the XB-70 program into a research undertaking. Exploring consequences of supersonic flight and propulsion was made possible by the Valkyrie. In May 1964, North American Aviation completed the AV-1, the first prototype in Palmdale, California. A third prototype was intended but was scrapped and the second one, the EV-2, came Came out in October of that same year. The first XB-70 took off for its first flight in September 1964. On the third test flight on October 12, 1964, the Valkyrie made its first supersonic passage when it accelerated to Mach 1.1. On October 14, 1965, when the AV-1 reached a height of 70,000 feet, it overcame Mach 3 for the first time. Following in the footsteps of its sister, the AV-2 eventually took the lead as the airplane with the highest top speed among the two prototypes. The AV-2 achieved and sustained a peak speed of Mach 3.08 for 20 minutes in April 1966. A month later, the EV-2 traveled 3,900 kilometers or 2,400 miles in just 91 minutes while flying for 32 minutes at Mach 3.06. On June 8, 1966, tragedy struck when the second XB-70 prototype was destroyed in an accident after colliding with an F-104N chase 
Space Aircraft mid-flight. During the collision, one person suffered severe injuries and two people died. A major setback resulted from the loss of the second aircraft, which was significantly more capable than the first. However, testing went on until February 4th, 1969. According to NASA, the first XB-70 completed 83 flights for a total of 160 hours and 16 minutes, while the second XB-70 completed 46 flights for a total of 92 hours and 22 minutes. In December 1968, the XB-70 Valkyrie made its final supersonic flight. The Valkyrie AV-1 made its final journey to the U.S. Air Force National Museum close to Dayton, Ohio in February of the following year. Although it had a difficult existence from development to retirement, the XB-70 Valkyrie is still on display there and continues to astound with its futuristic appearance, performance, and background. It was a byproduct of the Cold War, when researchers believed that bombers carrying nuclear weapons could be protected at Mach 3 speeds and greater altitudes. However, high development expenditures and subsequent technological advancements rendered the XB-70 Valkyrie obsolete. Instead, the bomber was employed in a study to better understand supersonic flight. Supersonic flying knowledge gained from the Valkyrie was very useful and eventually applied to other military aircraft. Although the 1966 crash marked a darker chapter in the plane's history, the remaining Valkyrie continued to be used for study before being put on display at an Ohio museum in 1969. The XB-70 was the wrong plane for the wrong time. While being a technological marvel at the time, it happened at the period when manned aircraft were allegedly being replaced with ballistic missiles. Additionally, it was being developed at a period when it became increasingly clear that high altitude and speed alone weren't enough to defend against surface-to-air missiles or the upcoming generation of Soviet fighters. Despite failing to fulfill its initial purpose as a strategic bomber, the Valkyrie project helped develop later designs such as the B-1B Lancer bomber and the SR-71 Blackbird spy plane. More regret, it was probably the fastest bomber ever built, indeed. How did this amazing aircraft and its history click with you? Share it in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't spare us the like and hit that subscribe button together with the notification bell so you won't miss any upcoming insightful videos. Once again, this has been High Technology serving you the best and cutting edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet. Until then, see you on the next one.